this video, I'm talking about the Tokina 28 to 70 millimeter f2.6 to f2.8 zoom lens. Now this is a super special lens. And if you know about it already, then obviously you know why. However, if you don't know what makes this lens so special, I'm gonna do a quick overview about this lens and just what makes this such an awesome and unique lens. So before this lens was actually released, Tokina worked with another lens brand called Anjanu, and they worked together to create the Anjanu 28 to 70 millimeter f2.6 lens. And if you know about Anjanu, they're a very well-respected lens company and they make really high quality photo and cinema lenses and they're typically very expensive because of how well made they are. And so Tokina actually teamed up with them to create that lens. And then a little bit later on, Tokina actually made their own version of it, which is of course this lens right here, the 28 to 70 Tokina lens. So this lens has the exact same optics as the Anjanu lens. However, it's in a different body. And I'm guessing it's a little bit lower quality of a body and pretty much everything else about it besides the optics than the Anjanu, which made the Tokina a little bit cheaper and you know more accessible for normal people. Now there's a bunch of different variants of this Tokina 20 to 70 lens. However, the version one and version two are both the ones that are based off that Anjanu optical design. And so I have version two here. However, like I said, version one and two are pretty similar and they're both based off that Anjanu optical design that Tokina worked with. And so that's a little bit of a backstory about this lens and why it's so interesting and so unique because it has that high quality Anjanu new optical design. And actually the Anjanu version of this lens is super hard to find and it's very, very expensive. I saw one pop up on eBay for, I forgot it was around $1,500 to $2,000, but there's really not many for sale anywhere. They're really just hard to come by. So it's kind of hard to tell the exact price point of those. And actually the Tokina is pretty hard to come by as well. Right now, I think maybe one, if any, on eBay in the US. However, they're definitely not as expensive as Anjanu. And the Tokinos are closer to like two to 500 dollars typically. So it's still not a super cheap lens. However, the images that you can get out of them are just really interesting and look really good. And so I want to kind of give my thoughts on that right now, what I think about using this lens. And of course, I'm going to show you some footage I've shot with this with my a7S 3 in full frame, as well as my Canon EOS M shooting in Magic Lantern RAW. So first things first, you might notice that I actually have mine cinematted. So I can get a little close up here. I have a focus ring right here and then a zoom ring right here geared to use with my follow focus as well as this right here which is a sim mod 77 millimeter it's actually not a step up ring because this is already 77 millimeters but essentially a 77 millimeter ring with an 80 millimeter outer diameter so i can slip on the lens cap which i also have for it and last but not least i have it adapted to ef mount so this is pretty much a cinema modded version of it. However, it's still gonna perform the exact same as just a regular version of this in terms of image quality. But pretty much what I wanna get out with this is the build quality of this lens is amazing. It's pretty hefty. The build quality feels really good. It seems to be made mostly out of metal. There's some plastic in there. And of course the rubber on the focus and zoom rings and stuff like that, but it seems to be mostly made out of metal and it's pretty hefty. Really good build quality. I have no complaints in the build quality department with this lens. And so like the name says, this goes from 28 millimeters to 70 millimeters, which is a pretty standard focal range. And this pretty much covers anything from a wide angle 28 millimeters, not ultra wide, like 20 or 24, or, you know, anything wider than 20 millimeters. So you can't get any sort of crazy ultra wide shots. However, from 20 millimeters, pretty wide angle all the way to 70 millimeters, which is a semi portrait length, I would say. It's also not extreme on that end. It's not super zoomed in or super telephoto. However, over covering pretty much everything in between, you know, that 50 millimeter, that 35 millimeter focal range is really nice, especially since it's an f2.6 to f2.8. So at the widest focal length at around 28 millimeters, it's gonna be f2.6. And then as you zoom in, it'll stop down to f2.8 as the widest f-stop. So it's not insanely fast like f2 or f1.8. However, for a vintage zoom like this, f2.6 to 2.8 is a pretty good wide f-stop. So like I said, this lens is built very well. Now let's move on to uh, the performance of this lens optically and what I think of actually using this lens and how the images come out of it. So first of all, I don't believe it's just my copy. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's standard with all of these lenses, but wide open at f2.6 or 2.8, depending on which focal length you're at, this lens is very soft. I'd even go as far as to say it looks like it has like a quarter pro mist filter on it or something like that. It has this soft hazing effect to it, wide open at all focal lengths. It looks really interesting. It's something that's a little bit more stylish that I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't want all the time. But personally, I really like how that looks for a lot of things. Having that softer, hazy look is something that I go for personally a lot. I use 
mist filters a lot of the times on my sharper lenses just to make them a little bit softer and kind of bloom the highlights a little bit. So the fact that this lens does that as well as showing its vintage characteristics, it makes it look really nice and really pleasing wide open. However, it's not going to be tack sharp. It's not going to be a pristine image. And so that's definitely something to think about if you do want to get this lens and you need to shoot wide open at f2.6 to 2.8. However, once you stop down to f4, it gets a little better, but I still wouldn't say this lens is anywhere near tack sharp at f4. It still has a little bit of that soft, hazy look to it. And then of course, if you stop down to f5.6, it gets a little better. But from my testing and with my copy, I have a really clean copy, so I don't think it has to do with mine specifically. If you do own this lens, I'd like to know your thoughts down in the comments but it never really gets super sharp and super pristine. Of course, once you stop down to f5.6 and lower, it's gonna sharpen up a lot more, uh, but it kind of always has that slightly soft, hazy, vintage look to it. And that's something very important that you need to know if you are looking at purchasing this, because for a lot of types of filming, you might not want to have that look at all. You might want to have a really clinical, sharp look to your images. And really, no matter what, you can't get that with this lens for the most part. So this is really more of a stylized, vintage, soft feeling lens. But because of that, the images that you get out of this lens just look amazing in my opinion. I'm a huge fan of that look. I love vintage lenses. I love getting that vintage look to my films and my photos and kind of having that organic, little bit of a softer, you know, not pristine feeling. And this lens does that very well. This lens has just been awesome to use for me. Now, one more thing to bring up, while I was doing my research before buying this lens, a lot of people talked about how this is essentially a parfocal lens. And some say that it is perfectly parfocal. However, with my copy, I have I haven't really experienced that. It's definitely close, but it is not parfocal, and I wouldn't count on it being parfocal if you're interested in purchasing it. I think that's something that's pretty much based off each copy. It's close enough to where if something's off a little bit, it just won't quite be parfocal. And of course, it's a photo lens, so originally it wasn't built and meant to be perfectly parfocal. So that's something I would keep in mind. I wouldn't purchase this assuming that it is perfectly parfocal like a you know high-end cinema lens would be. But yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the Tokina 20 to 70 millimeter lens. Like I said, this is an amazing lens if you want to go for that vintage looking feel for your films or photos. However, you can't really get a super, super pristine clinical image out of this like you would with say a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 or really any Sigma art lens or Canon L series lens or something like that. You're not going to get anywhere near as a pristine of an image as you would with those lenses. And I think that's the biggest thing you should keep in mind before purchasing this. So that's it for this video. Go down to the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.